Welcome to episode 74 everyone. In this one I'll be detailing the uh, avionics bays on TACOM's AH-64D Apache. In the last video you'll recall that we uh, added uh, some sensor lenses scratch built from an old DVD disc and uh, in this video the scratch building continues. It's time to detail the uh, avionics bays uh, on the uh, TACOM Apache, some, uh, some wiring that needs to be added there. And as a bonus, I'll also be showing you some detailing I did on uh, the tail rotor section. But first, a word from the sponsor. Guys, if you've been following this build, you know that it's been uh, generously sponsored by Supernova Studio here in South Africa, my favorite hobby shop. And uh, for December, there's a special discount on this kit. So uh, if you're in South Africa, do make use of this opportunity to, uh, to add this kit to your stash. Now back to the build. You'll notice that uh, the side sponsons include these uh, open avionics bays and I'll be uh, scratch building some detail in there. Now guys, if you're not completely comfortable with that, uh, fear not. Quintus Studio recently launched uh, uh, Avionics Bay Upgrade Kit for the uh, Tacom Apache. And uh, this is certainly something to consider uh, if perhaps uh, you don't want to go to all the trouble that I'll be showing you in this video. The left and right side Avionics Bays are molded into the side sponsons and they are molded as a single part, very large parts indeed. And uh, guys, always work over a, uh, a plastic tray so you don't lose parts. So there we go. Very nice detail indeed. And uh, quite accurate as well as I discovered while I was working on this and comparing it to my reference pictures. It comes with uh, the, uh, the side covers. They fit in place very nicely. Also with the, the hinges. So plenty of opportunity to add some detailing. There is some... Uh, some photo edge detail and you can look at episode 66 where I covered the basics of working with this. Some very nice detail to add and uh, that is some of the prep work I did before I got to the, uh, got to the, the avionics bays. Now the covers unfortunately have these large ejector pin uh, marks and uh, I've never had much success trying to fill these with, uh, with putty. So instead I'm going to use sheet styrene. First I take some 40mm Tamiya masking tape and uh, the purpose of this is just to create a mask that I can use later to cut an accurate uh, cover from sheet styrene. So press that down, use your fingernail just uh, to get the, uh, the exact uh, outline of that and then use, the, uh, use your hobby knife just to cut that little piece of masking tape uh, away. You can see I'm marking the, uh, the latches. They will have to be cut out as well from the sheet styrene. And then when I'm done with this, I can now transfer this little piece of masking tape to a very thin piece of sheet styrene from Evergreen. So uh, this saves a lot of time uh, in uh, measuring, cutting, measuring again. I can now just work according to that uh, piece of masking tape. I used a cutting bit on my Dremel tool just to, to cut the, the, the holes for the latches. That's what I'm doing there. And when I'm done, this is the, uh, the cover. So gone are the, uh, the ejector pin holes and that looks quite neat and tidy. We can move on. Some of the final prep work involves uh, covering this hairline gap and for that I'll be using Vallejo plastic putty. Now guys, I didn't actually know it. But uh, this stuff is water soluble and I only find, found that out uh, through one of my Dutch hobby friends. So uh, dankjewel uh, Rick for uh, making me aware of this cool trick. So there you go guys. The putty has been uh, dissolved in, uh, in water and uh, that makes it so much easier just uh, to fill that little gap uh, with a disposable brush. You can see it flows right into the gap. Once this is dry, that gap will be gone. So with this done, all the, uh, the basic prep work, I can now move on to primer and paint, and that is the next step. As always, I'll be using a high quality uh, self-leveling primer, in this case, uh, black primer from uh, Mr. Hobby. 
and there you can see the results i really like this uh, this prime i love the results i get uh, get with it and uh, this has been applied to both the avionics uh, equipment as well as the covers next up is pre-shading white and black and uh, just for some contrast i also added some aggressor gray from a Vallejo Model A, and I'll show you how I did that in just a second. Guys, this really changed the, the way that I approached all my, uh, my paint work on my models. I recall that as a uh, novice model, I always looked at the, the works of master modelers, and I couldn't figure out how these guys got these wonderfully, almost textured paint jobs. And of course, one of the tricks they used is pre-shading, and uh, that's what I did there uh, on those parts. So this is now ready for the base color. If you look, you'll notice uh, that there's a center rail and that all the wiring is fed into this. And uh, this, of course, will need to be drilled out. You can see there those, uh, those holes are there, but they, they, they're not hollow. So those will have to be drilled out. And that's the next step. Now for this, I'll be using some of my micro drills using a hand drill. And uh, I just uh, carefully started drilling away those holes so that uh, I can feed the, uh, the, the wiring later into that. You can see I'm using my, uh, my hobby knife just uh, to clean up those, uh, those holes. And there you go, this is now ready to go. And before I go further, let me share some top tips that I've learned while working with wire. First, drill anchoring holes before you add wire to your models. This will just uh, help you to uh, get them fitted in the correct spaces. Also try and prime and paint your wire beforehand, especially for silver and copper wire. Uh, I use a Vallejo primer that I find uh, has a little bit of flex and that will be helpful when you start bending the wire. And then finally, use super glue with a fine tipped or needle applicator. And again, uh, working with the, the, the anchoring holes that you drilled, this will make it easy to, uh, to add uh, wire to your bills whether it be for radios or electronics or whatever the, the purpose may be. So uh, following that uh, checklist, I'm first going to drill uh, anchoring holes into all these little connectors that uh, TACOM provided us with. Just uh, a small anchoring hole, it doesn't have to be too deep. And uh, the purpose of this is to just to help the, 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 the tip of the wire to, uh, to seat properly uh, when I glue it in place uh, in the model. Now the interior base color is sort of a, a greenish yellow and uh, I planned on using US uh, interior yellow as the base color but I decided to add a little bit of green yellow just to, to get it closer to the, um, to, the, to the reference picture. So just a few drops of this mixed with uh, some uh, acrylic thinner and uh, also some, some airbrush flow improver. So there we go, that is the color that I mixed and I also just compared this to the uh, to my reference pictures to make sure that I'm on point. I also uh, kept some of this in a jar in case I needed some to do some touch-ups later. This is now very carefully airbrushed onto the pre-shaded parts. And guys, the, the trick here is to apply your, your paint gradually. You can rather build up the color uh, through multiple passes than uh, just to lay it down in one thick coat. And if you follow this way of working, you'll notice that uh, you won't kill your pre-shading. So there we go, applying the, uh, the interior yellow green base color and that is the result, certainly happy with that. Next uh, I need to uh, mask uh, the yellow areas so that I can spray the, uh, the black boxes, the electronic boxes themselves and that will be done with the uh, NATO black. Again gradually building up the color, not laying it down in one thick coat. Finally, as a highlight, I used US Loam, and you'll recall that I used this in the cockpit as well. And that is very carefully applied with the, with the airbrush to the center sections of each of those black boxes, just for some visual interest. And guys, there you can see, that is the basic colors down, and uh, I'm ready to uh, proceed with the next step. Next up, I'm going to use Vallejo Light Gray, and uh, I'm gently going to dry brush this over all the, uh, the raised detail, just uh, to bring out those, uh, those buttons and dials and switches that you see there. There you go, that's the, uh, the dry brush detail, looks very nice, and uh, I can move on. Next you'll notice these connectors, some of them are red, some of them uh, are steel or silver color, and uh, those are the colors that I, that I will use to, um, 
do the detail painting. We lay steel and we lay flat red. This is carefully uh, painted in by hand with a fine detail brush. I'm also uh, adding the red there. With all this done, it's time to protect all this uh, paint work and for that I'm using Micro Scales Micro Satin. I'm also applying this to uh, some of the wire that I'll be using later. And this is just to protect everything and uh, to prepare it for, for the wash color that I'll be adding next. Now the wash is a black wash from Ammo MIG. This is something that I also used uh, on the cockpit. I really like to uh, thin these, uh, these wash colors down quite a bit. It just helps them to flow into all the, uh, all the detail uh, on the kit parts. And this is now carefully applied with uh, plenty of odorless thinner uh, to the uh, control surfaces that you see there. All those connectors, buttons and switches. Also apply some to the, uh, to the rail, the riveting there. Now with all this done, it's time to start adding the wiring. That's the, that's the big job that's lying ahead of us. All the prep work has now been done. Now, I use different sizes of wire. The first being uh, this 0.5 millimeter cable from Tamiya. This is one of my favorites, also for radio equipment. The next, uh, I use some uh, 0.3 and 0.4 millimeter copper wire, uh, different uh, types, you can see there. But it's also very useful is lead wire, 0.4 millimeter lead wire. And this stuff uh, is very pliable, which makes it ideal for use uh, in, uh, in scale models. Finally, a very thin wire, 0.25 millimeter, and this is from AK. So having said that, let's get back to our checklist. Uh, we've done the, the first step, drilling all those anchoring holes. And uh, the next step is to prime and paint the wire that uh, we'll be using for the avionics bays. I'll be doing this with my airbrush and uh, I built this uh, really simple little jig just uh, to help me with paint and uh, I use this for, for both for wire as well as masking tape to do things like rifle uh, slings and uh, you know all, all sorts of other uh, uses just to wrap the, the wire around there and then I'm going to use uh, Vallejo uh, white surface primer I find this has a little bit of flex and uh, there you can see the result nicely uh, nicely primed and this uh, is now ready to go into the model. With the, with the wire painted I can now start uh, cutting the, the required lengths of uh, the different types of wire that I'll be using. Now, one of the really useful tools uh, for, for this job is uh, this set of bending pliers and I believe this is available at shops that sell uh, uh, beadwork supplies. So back to our checklist, last step use super glue with a fine tip needle applicator. And guys, this is very important uh, for, for wire work. I would recommend that you use super glue. Other adhesives uh, might not work as well. The adhesive that I use for this is uh, gel type super glue from Green Stuff World. This is available from Supernova Studio. And uh, also make sure to get these uh, fine tipped applicators uh, when you order yours. You can see that it makes it very easy to uh, just add a very small bead of glue to the uh, to the to the tip of that, uh, that connector, also where we drill the uh, anchoring hole. And uh, this makes it very easy now to just uh, to add the, uh, the wires itself using a tweezer. And because it's super glue, the, uh, the bond is instant. So actually this, uh, this makes a rather difficult job a little bit easier. Of course, this is precision work. This is not something that you rush and uh, you keep your references close by as well. So there's the result. That's the, the one side done. And I'm certainly happy with that. At this point, uh, it's a good idea just uh, to touch up any of the, uh, the tweezer marks where we might have removed some of the white primer. And a uh, good idea just uh, at this stage to uh, touch up the, the white with a fine brush. Now next, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a multitude of cable ties, black cable ties, uh, used on, on the wiring, and that's something we'll have to uh, add by hand. I'll be using NATO Black for this, as well as a fine detailing brush. It's now very carefully uh, just uh, painted into place. There we go. Again, not something that you rush, something that you take your time with. 
And uh, I also find that using a set of uh, magnifiers uh, helps me to do this, uh, this work accurately and properly. Guys, so there we go. That is all the wiring done. I am over the moon with this. This is an excellent result and uh, I'm very happy with this. A last detail to add are these 30 millimeter rounds for the, uh, for the chain gun. And uh, it's a very nicely detailed little uh, part that TACOM supplied us with. For this, I used the uh, olive drab as well as some yellow and uh, brass. You'll also notice these small wires leading to uh, that component. And this was also added while I still had some thin painted uh, 0.25mm wire. So guys, there we go. The, uh, the avionics bays have been completed and the side sponsons can now go onto the model. And uh, this certainly adds a great deal of uh, extra detail to the Apache. Now onto the bonus uh, section that I promised in the beginning. There's this gap in the, uh, in the rear of the, of the tail and uh, I think TACOM gave that to us for scratch pulling. I've got uh, this one reference picture that sort of shows the, uh, the interior components and I decided to try and scratch pull that into this space, just some extra uh, fine detail. For this, I dug into my, uh, my spares box. Again, guys, when you finish a model, don't throw away the old sprues. Uh, some of those unused parts will be very useful on future builds. I also used some leftover photo etch fret, as well as some, uh, some brass tubing uh, that I have in my scratch balling supplies. So using all these parts, I started uh, mixing and matching. And uh, finally, I had something together that more or less looks like the uh, components that I see in my reference picture. There's the unpainted version. And uh, the next step was to just to uh, apply the, the usual primer uh, to both the tail and, and, the, uh, and the scratch pull parts, as well as the, uh, the yellow interior color, carefully uh, airbrushed uh, in there. You can see on your screen. And uh, then finally detailing the, uh, the scratch ball, the, I believe it's called an intermediate uh, transmission uh, for, for, for the tail rotor. This is glued in place, you can see there, carefully positioned. And uh, there we go guys, that is the, uh, the tail rotor drive uh, scratch bolt, and I believe this adds a nice little uh, extra detail to the, to the, uh, to the Apache. So that is the current state of progress. Quite a lot has been done. Of course, we're not done yet with uh, this build. Uh, the next big step will probably be to uh, assemble and detail the engines. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the uh, promo code LONGBOW2601 will get you a 20% discount for the, uh, the month of December. This is a special festive season uh, uh, special offer. If you're in South Africa, do make use of this and uh, order your uh, Tacom Apache uh, as soon as possible. Again, guys, this uh, is a limited time offer for December 2023 only, 20% discount. You might also recall the, uh, the Dustback T72M that I built uh, early in the year. That is also on special at Supernova Studio. If you use the promo code off the sprue, you will get a 400 Rand discount on this kit uh, for December 2023 only. So guys, do make use of uh, these special offers. They are only uh, valid for December this year. That's it then for video 74. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following along. Uh, again, uh, follow me on Instagram. I do frequent updates there and uh, you won't miss a single thing. Uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in the next video coming soon.